Hi, you might have noticed that Apple launched a new version of software for your iPhone. It's called iOS 16 and brings arguably the biggest change to your lock screen that we've ever seen from Apple. I'm Cam Bunton from Pocketlint and in this video I'm going to show you some of my favourite features from iOS 16 and features that you want to try as soon as you download the new software. If you do like this video, please do leave a thumbs up, subscribe and tap the notification bell to make sure you don't miss any more. Number one, of course, the lock screen. This is the star of the show. Apple has revitalized it, giving you customization options that just haven't existed before on iPhone. Better late than never, right? It's nice and easy to work with too. It's similar to how you customize your Apple Watch face. Just press and hold on the lock screen and tap customize. Or swipe across and then tap add new. You'll get a whole bunch of presets to choose from with different clock styles, widgets and wallpapers. Once you've selected your style from the available options, then you get to customize it. So tap on the date field at the top and you can swap out the default for something else. So if you want the date and the weather conditions or the date and upcoming events or the date and your fitness progress, you can. Tap the clock and you can change the font and style. And there are a few options here. As for color, by default, it chooses the colors that work with the wallpaper, but you can manually choose a different color from the available options at the bottom. Then there's the bottom widget field, which you can add small square widgets or larger rectangular ones to. And these can include all manner of data from weather conditions through to calendar events and battery levels. When you've chosen your style and you press those three dots in the bottom corner here, you can choose if you want a depth effect, where the clock can partially hide behind the foreground subject to fake a sense of perspective. It's pretty cool, but only works if you don't have those little widgets at the bottom but it can create them automatically from any photo in your gallery. Perhaps the best part is that once you've customized and created your own personal lock screen, is that you can create more of them. You can add and create them and cycle through them whenever you like. So one option, like a lot of Android phone makers, is to have it cycle through photos. When you select this photo shuffle mode, you can choose whether you want people, pets, nature or cities, and even choose which people show up. Plus, choose how frequently you want it to change and even manually choose the photos that you want it to cycle through. So there you go, a quick look at the lock screen, but what else is there? One of my next favorite tips is editing and unsending iMessages. One really useful feature that many other messaging apps have already got is the ability to edit messages once you've sent them. For instance, if you want to fix a typo or if you just want to unsend the message altogether. To do so, just type an iMessage as normal and hit send. Now press and hold on that message and you'll see two options in the pop-up menu that appears. Tap edit to change what it says or tap the unsend option to get rid of it. It is worth noting that after a while these options become unavailable, so old messages can't be edited and unsent. Number three is on a similar note and it's unsending or scheduling email. So the built-in mail app also lets you unsend emails now. All you need to do is tap the undo send option at the bottom of the screen after you've sent an email then fix it and send it again if you want to. Or if you want to schedule it instead, just tap and hold the blue arrow in the top and select send later. Here you can choose the date and the time that you'd like to send the message. You can even choose which time zone you want it to be sent in. It's really useful if you're emailing colleagues or friends in a different time zone. Number four is dragging and dropping photo subjects or removing backgrounds. So one really cool feature in photos lets you select subjects from within an image, removing them from their background and creating a cutout with a plain background. Then you can automatically just copy them or share them any way you like. All you have to do is tap and hold on a photo and you'll see this glowing line appear. When you let go, you have the option to copy it, which you can then paste onto a document or image elsewhere or straight into a message or hit the share button and you can send it via any app or method that appears in your share sheet. You can even save it or assign it to a contact if you want to. Number five is another one of those finally moments, battery percentage. So for years, Apple has always just used a visual battery icon that shows its vague level by just emptying that virtual battery indicator in the status bar. However, if you want a more precise idea of how much battery you have, you can have the percentage actually written inside the battery indicator. Just open settings, go to battery and toggle on the battery percentage option to see the level in that icon. Another handy one, number six, is converting prices in photos. So in iOS 15, Apple introduced a feature that let you capture text directly from a camera app or from a photo in your gallery. It was called Live Text. With iOS 16, it's become smarter, offering instant currency conversion. So snap a photo of a price in a different currency, 
Go to Photos and tap the Live Text button at the bottom and now tap on the price and it should convert to your local currency. On a similar note is number 7 and it's Live Text for Video. So you can even use live text in video now. So if you're watching a video from your gallery as an example and it has text that you want to copy and paste from, you can do. Just hit pause while it's playing, tap the live text icon in the bottom corner and then select the text that you want to use. You could do all the usual text stuff with it like copying, translating, looking up definitions or sharing it. Just like any other highlighted text. Number 8 is Smarter Dictation. So if you've ever used voice dictation to send a message before, there's a good chance you've been frustrated at its lack of punctuation. I know I certainly have been, and it's the primary reason I don't use it. However, with iOS 16, that's changing. The voice dictation in the latest software can automatically tell when you need commas, full stops, and question marks. Or it's supposed to. It doesn't actually work 100% perfectly, but it is a lot better than it used to be. Plus, you can even tell it to insert emoji now, just by saying something like wink emoji, or poop emoji, or unicorn emoji, or whale's flag emoji. And lastly, an important one for families, and it's family checklist. If you manage a family iOS account where you share purchases, subscriptions, and manage children's account restrictions and screen time, you'd be glad to know a lot of that useful stuff has been collated into one family checklist option. This gives you a list of settings to look at and adjust based on what features it thinks you need to pay attention to. One of those is setting up a recovery contact, which can be really useful if you or a family member forget your Apple ID password or get locked out of your account. Open settings and go to the family checklist option, then scroll down until you see add a recovery contact. Now go through the very simple process, and now you have a backup way to get into your account or a family member's account if or when you need to. So there you go, just a handful of the iOS features that I found useful in the latest version of iOS. If you did like this video and found it useful, please do leave a thumbs up, leave a comment down below if you found something even more useful that I've missed. I'm also on Twitter if you want to get hold of me on there, I'm at Cam Bunton. Again, if you did like it, please do leave a thumbs up, subscribe and tap the notification bell to make sure you don't miss any more. And stay tuned for more phone coverage. I'll see you again in the next one. Bye for now.